We're going on five rides in three hours at the notoriously busy Hollywood Studios. I'm gonna show you how you can do this too. Now we're able to do this thanks to Genie Plus, but one specific strategy of Genie Plus called stacking, specifically stacking your lightning lanes. Now what that means is when you get multiple lightning lanes that have return times that are stacking or AKA that are close together. So as you can see right here in my mid morning example, I have multiple return window times for rides that are kind of overlapping. So I could basically get on one ride after the other after the other. And this strategy is how you're going to be able to ride multiple rides in a very short amount of time. But to back it up, Genie Plus 101 time. So Genie Plus is a special paid service that lets you not skip the line, but I call it like basically move up in the line because you're not going to be standing in the regular standby line. You're going to be in a special designated line for people with Genie Plus Lightning Lanes as well. Now, Lightning Lane is the actual queue that you stand in, but Genie Plus is the program you use to book the Lightning Lane. So it's a little bit confusing, but Genie Plus is the program you book Lightning Lanes through Genie Plus. Now, while Genie Plus can save you time, it's also going to cost you money because the price of Genie Plus is an add-on to your normal park admission, and the price of it fluctuates depending on the day, the projected crowd level, and even which park you go to. As you can see here, there's different prices for different parks. When we came to Hollywood Studios, it was $22 per person for the day. Now, success for stacking begins in the morning, and I brought some handy-dandy visuals to go along with breaking all this down because it can get a little bit confusing potentially, so we're going to take it step by step. Also, I don't really do the big ride, so my husband was helping out with this. Thanks, hubby. But before breaking down exactly how to stack Genie Plus Lightning Lanes, let's first talk about getting Genie Plus to start with. You need to decide in advance if you want to buy Genie Plus for your park day because it may sell out. And also, if you decide mid morning that you actually want to get it, you're already behind when it comes to booking Lightning Lanes, especially some of the biggest and most popular rides because those are going to be some of the first that get booked, which is part of our stacking strategy, which I'll get to in just a second. Have all of your party linked in your My Disney Experience app so that you can book Lightning Lanes for everyone. When the clock strikes midnight for your Disney day, you can begin purchasing Genie Plus. But you want to ultimately make sure that it's purchased and everyone is linked on your party and everything's good to go before 7 a.m. 7 a.m. is our critical window here. Now, if you don't want to stay up till midnight and then be ready to start booking lightning lanes at 7 a.m., you could also just wake up a little bit earlier, around like 6.45. Now, to purchase Genie Plus, you can see it right here at the top of your My Disney Experience app homepage. Have Genie Plus purchased and ready to go by 6.57 a.m. at the latest because 7 a.m. is our magical number. This is the time that we can start actually booking our first lightning lane. And since we want to be starting to actually book things right at 7 a.m. on the dot, what you can do is either at 6.59 a.m. start refreshing your My Disney Experience app. Now to refresh on the app, simply swipe down. Now another alternative is if you have another phone handy, you can look at the clock on the iPhone and see when the second hand strikes 7 a.m. and book then as well. Now to use the idea of stacking effectively, you wanna prioritize, meaning book your first lightning lane for the hardest to get rides. So these are rides that are gonna be the most popular and therefore the ones that are probably going to get booked up the fastest. So here in Hollywood Studios, for example, the golden ticket ride is Slinky Dog Dash. Now the key here to stacking effectively is to book that lightning lane, period. It doesn't matter what time it is because ultimately we're going to change the time. We just wanna make sure that you have a lightning lane for the ride. So for your first lightning lane, make it a popular ride and just book whatever time comes up. Now here's where stacking comes in. We're gonna use the modify feature to actually change the time of the lightning lane. That's why it ultimately doesn't matter what time we book the lightning lane for, just that we have one. Now to modify the time, tap on the three dots next to your booked lightning lane then hit modify plan now first thing in the morning it just looks like this so what you can do is tap on it to see what other times are available but later in the day it gets easier because instead of saying book experience it actually has a time available for you to see to decide if you want to change to that time now if you decide you do not want to change to that time simply click the back and you have your same original time there still. So what you can see is I booked our Slinky Dog Dash and I just started modifying and looking for a different time. Like right here, I got an 8 p.m. time, didn't want that, that was too late in the day. So I simply clicked the X in the upper left corner and went back to our original time. And I just kept repeating that process this morning of hitting book experience, see what time came up, deciding if I wanted that one. If I didn't, I just exited back out. And I just kept repeating this over and over. And eventually, I was able to modify and get us a time with a return window of 620 
to 720, which seemed to be a pretty sweet spot. Now, since my goal was to get a bunch of rides in the same pocket of time, the same kind of window of time, I kept refreshing the page until I found one that more suited what I was looking for. So I hit booked experience, scroll down, you can see how different times just kept popping up. And then sometimes it even said that the experiences were all done for the day that I could not book anymore. But then as you can see, if I kept refreshing and swiping down that eventually sometimes it came back as available as another time, then it went away, then it came back. And you can even see that I could have gotten a much earlier time of 2.45, but ultimately for what I was trying to accomplish, this kind of 6.20 window was perfect. Ultimately, I wanted to keep our return times in the evening close to when park closed. Now, this strategy is great for if you're wanting to have a chill day, maybe just hang out at the resort, go to Disney Springs, and then pop in towards the evening and ride a bunch of things all at once. So we've got our first one on lock, Slinky Dog Dash, which is one of the hardest ones to get in the park. So I'm feeling pretty good at this, but now we need to book more lightning lanes to actually use the strategy. There's two strategies when it comes to booking more lightning lanes. Now, the first one is as soon as you tap into a lightning lane and redeem that lightning lane, you can book another lightning lane. Now that's a good strategy if you're looking to just get on a bunch of rides. But for our strategy, we're actually gonna use the other option, which is what's called the 120 minute rule. Since we're looking to keep everything in a really tight window, that's the way we're gonna go. 120 minute rule means that you can book another lightning lane after 120 minutes has passed. Meaning if I book one at 9 a.m., I can book one at 11 a.m. Or if I book one at 9.02 a.m., I can book one at 11.02 a.m. Now, one caveat with the 120 minute rule is that the 120 minute timer starts from when the park opens. So I booked our first lightning lane at 7 a.m., but Hollywood Studios opened at 9 a.m. this day, meaning I could not book another lightning lane at 9 a.m. I had to wait until 11 a.m. to book my second lightning lane. So the 120 minute rule starts from when the park opens. So basically we're gonna use this strategy of booking every 120 minutes and then modifying the lightning lanes to get them all in a closer time together. But because the 120 minute rule starts down to the minute, you wanna really be on top of making sure that you're hitting the 120 minutes every time it's available. So to counteract this, since you are a smart Disney goer, set an alarm on your phone for a minute or two before the next 100 20 minute window start. So if it's 11 a.m., set an alarm for 10:58. That way you are ready to go to book your next one. Because trust me, when you are in the park, out and about, even if you're relaxing at your resort, time will slip away. And before you know, it'll be like, oh dang, look at the time. I need to book another lightning lane. So as soon as you book one lightning lane, go ahead and set the alarm for the next lightning lane. So you're always staying on top of that. But in addition, go ahead and take the next attraction that you want to book a lightning lane for and put it on your tip board using the Genie Plus service to set your tip board will help you by putting the next attraction that you're interested in booking at the very top of the list. Because if you don't do this, you're gonna have to spend some time scrolling down and actually finding the next attraction, which may not be the biggest deal in the grand scheme of things, but hey, we are looking to maximize our time. To do this, you're going to hit your Genie Plus Day and you're going to go through the prompts. but instead of selecting a couple of attractions that you're interested in riding, you're just gonna pick the next one. This is something that I'd recommend doing at the very beginning of your day as well, going all the way back to 6.57 a.m. when we are ready to start booking our lightning lanes. Go ahead and pick the first lightning lane that you wanna book. I didn't get to do that this morning. I just kind of frantically scrolled down to the S to find Slinky Dog really fast, but don't be like me. Go ahead and pin the attraction that you're most interested in booking at the very top so it's even easier to get. So now that we're all set up for booking our next lightning lane let's talk about the second one I booked right at 11 I grabbed the first lightning lane for Mickey and Minnie's runaway railway that I found because that was the next ride that I wanted to get on again just booked any lightning lane for that one because we're going to use that same modify process to find a time that works better for us i.e closer to our slinky dog dash lightning lane we already have I'm about to get into a lot of numbers and details so I think we need a tasty beverage for that first Frozen Coke and Gertie, my absolute favorite. Mm. All right, 
Casey Beverage in hand, let's break down the numbers of how I worked the next couple of lightning lanes. So our original Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway Redemption time was 2.15 to 3.15. Now it's a bit farther away than our Slinky Dog Reservation. That was my objective was to get everything else, all the other lightning lanes closer to the Slinky Dog Redemption time because I knew that that was a lightning lane that as you can see at like 7 a.m. this morning was already starting to fill up and book. So I knew it was gonna be really hard to try to modify and change the time for that one. So I kept that one as the anchor and I looked to modify all of the lightning lane times around it. So for the Mickey and Minnie's one, I just kept doing the same thing we did, swiping down, looking to modify, finding a different time. And then I even kept pushing it back little by little. I couldn't originally find a time that was very close to the Slinky Dogs, but I was able to get it a little further back to 335 to 435. And you can do this while you are waiting in line for things, if you're just hanging by the pool, just periodically throughout the morning, I would just check in every so often, hop into the app, see what other options were available for time-wise. So that means as of 11.45 a.m., I had a Mickey and Minnie's redemption time of 3.35 to 4.35 and still our original Slinky Dog of 6.20 to 7.20. While the runway railway was not really as close to Slinky Dog as I would have liked, not too worried about it because we still had time to modify it. So Mickey Minis was our 11 a.m. booking. So with the 120 minute rule, around 1 p.m. I could book again. And I set my timer and my tip board so that I could book right at 1 p.m. for the next attraction that we wanted, which was Tower of Terror. See, I was prioritizing some of the more popular attractions and I was kind of working down my list that way, starting with the most popular and then kind of working to some of the ones that I felt like would be a little bit easier Easier to get on or maybe not require a lightning lane at all. So as you can see, I was able to snag Tower of Terror and I actually have it, I actually had it right around the Mickey and Minnie's runway railway time. They were literally stacking like one on top of the other. I could have tapped into one, then you know, hightailed it across the park to the other one and tapped in and knocked them both out in record time. But again, my goal was to get everything closer to Slinky Dog. If you have a little bit more flexibility for your day, that probably could have been a fine strategy, but I had a goal of three hours and as many rides as I could get to in that three hour time. Now with three Lightning Lanes book, I went to Old Reliable and started looking to modify. I was checking Mickey and Minnie's. As you can see, there was no other times really available. So I switched gears and decided to start modifying Tower of Terror. And I was actually able to get Tower of Terror closer to Slinky Dog. I wasn't too worried about Mickey and Minnie's because I had about two and a half hours before the Lightning Lane redemption time for that one became available at 335. So that gave me two and a half hours to find a different time. And the thing is you can actually modify and change the time of the lightning lane up until the point that you actually tap into the ride. So I knew I still had plenty of time to keep looking for a different option. So before we even step foot into the park, we had lightning lanes for three of the biggest rides. Now I continued modifying and I was able to ultimately push Mickey and Minnie's back closer to the other two lightning lanes. So it looked like this again, following that same method of refresh, refresh, refresh every so often until I found one that worked better for our time. As you can see from our lightning lanes, they are indeed stacked. They are very close together. So that's one thing to take into consideration when you're doing this plan is that you need to actually account for time riding the rides and getting between the rides as well. With having them as close together as we did, there was no room for a misstep, which was fine for us because it was just the two of us, two adults, and we were just gonna basically beeline it around attraction attraction. But keep that in mind. No your party maybe you want to add a little bit more space in between if you're traveling with kiddos or a larger party for us it was pretty go 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 and also taking into account the actual getting into the ride it took us 12 minutes from when we first tapped into mickey and minnie's runway railway for example to when we actually got on the ride and then about 10 minutes to ride the ride and get off so take that into consideration when you are actually thinking of stacking and booking your lightning lanes and this brought us up to 3 p.m meaning ding, 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 another lightning lane that we could book using that good old 120 minute rule. So this time I booked Toy Story Midway Mania for later in the evening from 7.50 p.m. to 8.50 p.m. Now at 5 p.m. and another 120 minutes, I checked and Smuggler's Run was available. So I went ahead and booked that as well. Meaning by 5.01, we had lightning lanes for five attractions at Hollywood Studios in a span of less than three hours. 
and we had the entire rest of our day to do other things. So the key to using stacking effectively is to keep looking to modify times, even if it means you get that little bit closer to the time you ultimately want, it gets you closer to be able to stack them overall. So keep pushing back the time, pushing back the time like I did with the Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway one. Getting that little bit closer each time will get you closer to having multiple stacked. Now we ultimately actually ended up getting more than five rides for Lightning Lanes. At this point we had made it to Hollywood Studios and we quickly beelined to our first two Lightning Lanes of Runway Railway and Tower Terror and did them in the nick of time. Then it was off to Slinky Dog Dash and this is where I was actually able to book another Lightning Lane. This is when I used the second option for booking lightning lanes. If you remember way back towards the beginning of the video, there's been the 120 minute rule, which we've used up to this point, but there's also the lightning lane booking option rule where once you tap in, you can book another lightning lane. So as soon as we tapped in at Slinky Dog Dash, I opened the app and started looking for another lightning lane. However, we'd already ridden two lightning lanes by this point. So why did I wait till Slinky Dog Dash? That's because in order to use this other lightning lane strategy, you have to first tap in at the first lightning lane you booked. Meaning that just because I'd already ridden two other things using lightning lanes, I couldn't, I was not eligible to book a new fresh lightning lane because my original very first lightning lane I booked was Slinky Dog Dash. Does that make sense? <laughs> So as soon as you use the first lightning lane that you book, you can then open up the other option and start booking more lightning lanes that are not restricted by the 120 minute rule. That's how I was able to get star tours while we were in line for Slinky Dog. It was a short standby line, so we ultimately didn't need the lightning lane, but hey, why not? You got a really observant eye, good for you. You may have noticed that we were actually tapping into our lightning lane a little bit after our redemption window had ended. So what's up with that? This is thanks to the grace window, which is going to be really helpful for when you're stacking lightning lanes because of how close together your times can happen. So if you get behind in any way, like how we really got stuck waiting in line for Smuggler's Run, that could really throw off the rest of your lightning lanes because if you miss your redemption window, you could also miss getting on the ride. But the grace period is officially as of right now, five minutes before your redemption window and five minutes after, meaning you have five minutes on either end to still be able to tap in and ride the ride. That's the official, official policy from Disney. I've seen there be some like anecdotally different times. With that being the policy, it's also the policy that it could change at any point. So I would err on the side of not having to use that and not planning to use that because I'd hate for you to miss out on the lightning lane with that in mind. But I say that to mention that if you are accidentally outside of your redemption window, if it's not too much after your redemption window, it's still worth it to go ahead and try tapping into the lightning lane to see if the grace window is still applying. Now, technically we probably could have hurried over to Rise of the Resistance and hopped in line there before the park closed at 9 p.m., which would have made seven rides in three hours, but we opted for a box tart and said, no regrets. I say that to mention that it's probably something you could take advantage of and accomplish. Now to lay it all on the table because my ultimate goal is for you to be able to do strategies like this on your next Disney trip so you can keep making magical memories. So there were perhaps a couple of things in our favor. So when we did this, it was Thursday at the end of May. So in terms of crowd levels, not peak busy summer season, but also not off season either. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot until just walking here into Toy Story Land that we actually did Aliens Rolling Saucers too right before we got our box start. After that, we checked off our seventh ride in less than three hours at Hollywood Studios. Oh, what a day. Now, there were also only two of us, two adults, so maybe made it a little bit easier to navigate the parks and to book lightning lanes. However, I've heard that up to parties of four to six, it doesn't make that tremendous of a difference when it comes to booking lightning lanes. I haven't personally experienced this, but I can say when booking dining reservations, that's definitely the case. Going from six to any larger than six is a lot harder to get reservations. I also keep calling this Toy Story Midway Mania. My millennial is definitely showing. It has been called that in years. Also, Rock and Roller Coaster was closed, which means that more people were vying for fewer rides for a park that already doesn't have a lot of attractions. That definitely made the day a little bit more challenging, but with the right strategy and stacking those lightning lanes can really help you, just like how these tips here can help you have an amazing Disney day. I'm Molly, and I'll meet you on Main Street.